How many of you are engineers here? Oh, quite a few. I would like to ask you a question. How many of you have had or hold backlogs in your life? <laughs> you might be surprised as I am starting my talk, nothing other than asking you about backlogs, right? The word backlog itself holds different enigmas. Let me tell you mine. I am Abhishek Mohurle. I am just 23 years old. My father is physicist. My father is researcher. And I required nine attempts to clear that physics subject in my engineering life. My uncle, who is mathematician, and I took, sorry, I failed in M1, M2, M3, M4, two to three times each, respectively. This does not end here. My younger Chacha, who is university gold medalist in chemistry, and I took six attempts to clear that subject in my engineering. Now you can understand what failure I have faced during my engineering. Everyone sitting over here has been criticized at some point of your life because criticism runs in our society. During my academics, when I was in the phase of failure, I have been also named like other on my face and behind my back. I literally had to walk around with the tagline name, Matlab, Abhishek is equal to failure. Literally my mind and ears became full of chants be, as being an unaware, irresponsible and wasted child of my much respected parents. Due to all this stress, I used to smoke 20 cigarettes a day. Day by day, my addiction kept on increasing and my pocket money would not be enough to pay my KT exam fees and my increasing number of cigarettes. So eventually, I got involved in many illegal deeds like selling mass tickets in black and baiting to fund my those bad habits and increasing number of cigarettes. Vacation during third year, we planned a trip to Goa. Yes, that was the year when I anticipated an ear drop was inevitable. Being a spoiled child, that did not bother me a lot, but the news came as a shock. At that time, I was completely devastated and even more su suicidal. I thought of myself completely unworthy and worthless child. I had let everyone down. It took me time, but I did recover. My grandfather once said to me, Abhi, now your parents are paying for all your expenses. After a few years, if you aren't able to earn that money or aren't able to live such life, then where would you see yourself? And yes, indeed, that was my wake-up call. Later on, during my year drop, many of our friends asked us that about their travel plans. At that time, we planned their trip from booking flight tickets, from booking stays, and all those things. We helped them in every manner about their tra travel and all those things. That was the time I started my first company, that is Tools and Travels, with my friend. You can say a basic startup and start, I started earning my own. It is through the profit and loss, it is through profit and loss I understood and knew the value of real money. Later on, days were passing and I suddenly stopped smoking. There were a few days when I used to smoke 20 or more cigarettes and one day I was still alive without a single one. And that time I realized I am bound to more precious responsibilities. And from that day, whenever I told any of my friend that I quitted smoking or what, no one simply could believe on that statement. Because I had said a strong impression of smoking literally anytime, anywhere. That's why no one would believe on that thing. So after one or two months, I realized if Abhishek can quit smoking, then he can achieve anything in his life. And see, it is true. 
I never felt this confident and proud about myself ever before. Quitting smoking was not a possibility until and until and unless I realize I'm bound to more precious responsibility. Now, how many of you wants to turn your passion into profession? Wow. Knowing your passion is also a big enigma of your life. But it is not necessary, necessary to strive to know what, what is your passion. Things will fall apart and you will automatically know what are your hobbies, what you want to exactly achieve in your life. That's what life has taught me till date. What I am today? I am an author, a Marathi speaker and an entrepreneur. You can say, I, all these are my hobbies I turned into profession. <coughs> when I hold a copy of my recently published book, I simply could not believe that one of my hobbies I turned into profession. It started from my childhood. I started writing from my childhood. Writing and essays and those long letters in answer sheets seem to be boring part for most of us, right? That, but I used to love that thing from my childhood. I used to love those framing those all those essays and writing those long pages. It's completely started from there, and I continued that thing by writing first writer on my father on Facebook and kept on increasing number of write-ups. Later, that was the time when I, uh, that was the time of my ear drop. I decided to make that ear to some use. And that time, the nutshells were are often in news. And having a curious mind and being from that area, I painted down a book on nutshellism. And I am one of the youngest person in our country to research on them and paint down a book on them. <laughs> people called me mused. Sorry, people called me confused. I keep myself mused. All these ventures and publishing a book required finances. You will find this funny, but after quitting cigarettes, I had some amount in my bank accounts. Of course, this was not enough to fund my ventures and all other expenses. But being to well to do family, Baba, that is my father, always provided us with everything. So obviously, birthdays and occasions came along with expensive gifts and everything. So instead of taking that gifts, from my parents, I I used to ask them to fund those amount to fund my startup or uh, fund my either exp other expenses, and I use that money for my startups. Then during my failure time and during the phase of backlogs, many people judged me, criticized me for about my education and all those things. That time, my father told me one thing. Simply translates to, the value of your word will stop the criticism. And that day, from that day, I worked hard to never drop my word, never let my word drop. My father always believed, not in preaching, but setting an example. My father taught me many things. They judged me on the basis of my education. I proved myself by pursuing my passion. Now, when you think out of the box or go against the flow or having a run machine into your mind, people will name you as a mysterious personality or a confused one. I have been also named like this from my childhood, but it is only you yourself who can solve that mystery eventually with your words or your deeds. Later, <coughs> but the fact remains, the only people who wants to understand you will listen to you.
otherwise everyone else is going to criticize you you always have a choice that to put your put that criticism under your feet and climb or put that criticism into your mind and break under the burden choice is yours you have always a choice hope that i have created <coughs> hope that i have created a little space into your heart and planted an idea into your minds i hope my imperfect words fill those perfect gaps of mystery which the title instilled it's an explicable enigma after all now it makes sense that why i have asked you about backlogs at the very beginning because sometimes you need a drop to talk okay that's it from my side thank you